I, I'm getting this question more and more and more and more about what can I do if inflation does start to go to you know 10% numbers like that double digit inflation you know what what can investors do to you know to stave that off because you know the cost of living is going to rise wages are unlikely to keep pace with that so you've got to look to really your investments and how you manage your investments and portfolio to try and you know knock that on the head because if you're not beating inflation then you're losing money it's as simple as that um, so it pays to be an asset owner if you're not a you know big asset owner like you know house prices continue to rise but houses are you know notoriously illiquid uh, and don't exactly provide you with great cash flow unless you're a landlord owner but then uh, there are issues around the cost of being a landlord as well so you know it opens up a big can of worms but it's important to you know make sure your portfolio is balanced and you know uh, although I'm a big advocate for active investing when you look at you know, like you say, the MSCI, what was it, 20-something percent 21. last year? I mean, that smacks inflation on the head pretty quickly. Um, so it's important for investors to know. Welcome to the Exponential Investor Podcast. Want to be a better, smarter, more clued up investor? Well, you've come to the right place. We cover the breakthrough investment ideas you don't hear about in the mainstream to keep you on top of the megatrends and opportunities reshaping our world. Good morning and welcome to the first edition for 2022 of the Exponential Investor Podcast. I'm your editor, Sam Volkering, here with my regular co-editor, uh, Kit Winder. Kit, it's nice to have you back in a brand new year full of twos, 2022. Um, I don't know if there's much in that. Um, I, I saw a tweet over the holiday period that this is the um, this is the last time we'll have three of the same number in a year until 2111 so the year 2111 fascinating stuff um, you know so it's good to start off the year with a knowledge gem for our viewers and listeners uh, anyway uh, i hope you had a good break everyone um you too kit um but let's kick this off with asking a very simple question um because i know over the last couple of weeks um christmas and the new year i kind of just switched off from the market um, so I'm not 100% sure what's actually been going on. I hope you're much more in tune with the comings and goings of the financial world kit than I am. But uh, tell me, what have you seen over the last couple of weeks? And, uh, and what are you looking forward to this year? Yeah, I mean, uh, it has been a pretty sort of normal time. I guess not a huge amount uh, has changed. Uh, one of the key metrics would be uh, bond yields have risen uh, a decent amount. So they're back up to nearly the levels uh, when people were freaking out uh, sort of nine or 10 months ago. Uh, so in America, that's 1.65%. And it got to 1.75 before and, and equities started wobbling a bit and getting a bit scared. So that's quite interesting to watch. Um, but basically, the major indices have been fine. And the, the, a lot of the themes that we were talking about towards the back end of last year have continued. A lot of tech and growth stocks are struggling uh, under the surface. Uh, I think a number of cryptos too, although I would defer to you on that one. Um, but still, the major indices keep keep rolling higher, breaking all time highs. I think Tesla had a great day uh, at some point. Uh, Kathy Wood with her Ark Innovation Fund, she's doubling down, predicting forty percent returns every year, pretty much infinitely because all of her incredibly innovative technology companies are in deep deep value territory after a sort of 1% decline on the S&P that day. Um, so yeah, a lot of the the traditional themes are going on. I think one of the maybe the interesting things that I noticed that people aren't so much talking about is the risk coming out of China, the threefold risk of they're having their first major COVID waves for a while, mm -hmm. their economy is slowing down, and she is coming under some pretty significant political pressure. There are critical articles being published in the national papers which never happens Ooh. when i say critical of course very <laughs> subtly so but um if you combine that as well with these the sort of the rolling on of the evergrande and the property crisis uh in china which is sort of slowly imploding infecting more firms lending is drying up property prices are falling uh and negotiations with bondholders don't seem to be going too well for evergrande so the sort of the trio of covid slowing growth in a property crisis in, you know, the engine of global growth is pretty severe. And then my final thing, I just saw a stat, which was that the MSCI World Index of Stocks was up 21% last year. Uh, and America was responsible for 18 of those percents, uh, wow. which just shows what an incredible other world the year America had compared to the rest of the world. And I think it would be reasonable to assume that 
well, it can't go on forever. I think we all know that. Um, but it would be, it's like when you roll five sixes in a row, it's amazing once, but if you do it twice, then you're really talking about something uh, stratospherically unlikely. So we shall see, but, you know, some sort of rebalancing along those lines uh, and watching China carefully. Yeah, I, I, um, I saw that, uh, I think I read this week that um, a, a quite sizable Chinese investment bank uh, had failed or, or was uh, on the brink of failure as well. So we might start to see more of that happening uh, from of that region, as well as some of the knock-on effects uh, from there. Um, you, you know, I always, I always get um, text messages from from friends uh, <laughs> when it comes to times like these, when there's like a big peel off in value from things like tech stocks and China and that. It's like, and it's pretty much asking: Is China, you know, China stocks like Alibaba? Is like, is that, are they now buy? Is this something we should be looking at? And it's kind of. One of those situations is, is, is this a period where we're trying to catch a falling knife or is this a buying opportunity when you look at the long-term you know, growth prospects of, of you know, China and these regions, you know, is Evergrande and some of these issues they've got with their property market, is this, is this systemic? Is this going to roll out for two, three, four, five, ten 10 years? Are we going to see a decade of Chinese nothingness uh, or does this become an opportunity to to get into some of these stocks in China and likewise some of these tech stocks as well. Um, albeit the, the, there does seem to be a, I guess it a bit of an awakening perhaps with investors that you still do need to find companies that either are making money and selling products and delivering profits or marching towards profitability, or at least have some level of certainty that they are going to make some money at some point in the near future. You know, the idea that, uh, you know, Revenue streams are a decade off, might starting to be get on the nose with the investment community, which you know is good and bad. You see, the investing in in speculative growth opportunities can be fun, very rewarding, um, but fraught with volatility. Um, so it's nice to mix in a few things like, you know, good old fashioned value dividend paying stocks. There's a few of those that are at pretty attractive valuations around at the moment, um, and looking for some of the companies that. You know, as we start to come out of uh, this COVID mess after being in it for two years, uh, that you know maybe there's some opportunities with companies that are you know essential staples of uh, a globally connected world. I know the airlines I think had a pretty good week uh, this week, and uh, you know continue. It's been something we've talked about on this this podcast before. And continue to be an area that gets hit pretty hard every time there seems to be some sort of new variant or a lockdown proposed or suggested or. This, that, and the other, you know, restrictions and all that. But at some point, the uh, the world will open again. So, you know, again, things to consider when when putting a portfolio uh, together. Um, yeah, look, the, I mean, the, that's it. That's probably the one thing that I think we might find twenty two is the mark is the mark of twenty two is the rollout from from uh, from coronavirus. I think I think we'll start to see some of the restrictions. That have been put in place fade away, and um, and we might see a number of pockets of stocks start to benefit from from that change. I I, I noticed, and you'll be all over this too, Kit. When when you mentioned uh, people freaking out earlier, my mind turned to Australia, um, where people uh, are currently freaking out over Novak Djokovic getting yeah. an, uh, an exemption because he is unvaccinated. He got an exemption to go and play in the Australian Open, and. Uh, the Australia has lost their mind over over this fact, poor old Novak. Um, but it makes me wonder: is is this is this sort of is is the Novak signal the one that we've been looking for that suggests that maybe we are on the pathway out of this all? Uh, God, I hadn't really thought about it that way. I just thought maybe it's a. a, a <laughs> I mean, the poor Australians, so many of them have been locked down for, was it Melbourne, 291 days, and you speak to people there and you can't travel into state uh, and all this stuff. And maybe <laughs> they're just so, I guess, uh, sick and tired or angry of having gone through all of that themselves That and also they can't travel. So if you have any international family or anything, and I know you, you will have been a victim of this as well, Sam, it's impossible to get into Australia or, or get back into it if you leave. And so the thought that, you know, it's because someone is a professional tennis player and also the best, you know, I see Jamie Murray tweeted, not sure in, in if I was in his situation, unvaccinated, whether I'd be getting an exemption. 
So does it matter that he's <laughs> better at tennis than Andy Murray's brother? Clearly it does. Um, and I think that's a sort of shame. But even, uh, I, I think all the England cricketers are vaccinated, but they're over there sort of playing in the ashes and they negotiated different quarantine levels uh, and the ability to sort of bring families over and things like that in order that the sport could go ahead. And yeah, it's a, it's a difficult argument to make, but I, I'd say maybe we're seeing a reaction to the extremity of Australia's policies. And, and with Omicron, here in the UK, we're sort of, we're muddling through. Uh, it's always sad when, you know, cases and hospitalizations are high and tragic when people are dying, but it does seem milder and it does seem as though people are mostly okay with what's going on. People are happy there's not lockdowns. We don't really expect lockdowns. So from an investment perspective, the sort of the ability to muddle through this latest variant, I think it's quite important. And, you know, we spoke late last year about whether America was going to get into the panic about Omicron that we were slightly feeling before Christmas. But we, you know, we got through probably the most difficult period of the year in terms of social interactions indoors mm. and cold weather sort of making people ill. And going into January, things will quieten down. And I don't know. Uh, I think three weeks ago, I was less optimistic. Now, I probably would agree with you that it's okay to start being maybe cautiously optimistic about whether Omicron is something that we could live with normally. Yeah, it feels like that the <clears throat> the UK market hasn't necessarily, I don't think, looked forward enough with its reactions to how this variant has played out and and how quickly things can turn about for i think america's sort of priced in the future um you know a year ago a year and a half ago even and that's that's probably why we saw you know it contri contribute 18 percent of the msci world index um whereas you're right you know europe and the uk the market's somewhat struggled comparatively to that sort of really in the second half of of 2021 in particular um but i also yeah i tend to get the feeling that you know, there's there's a number of factors that haven't changed, right? You know, central banks haven't really changed tack. While we might see some rate increases this year, it'll be um, lip service at best, uh, you know, a, a nominal tiny little quarter of a percent rise or something like that, just to just to, for them to prove that they are capable of doing something. Um, but I don't see, you know, we've talked about this a lot about inflation going away. And so, you know, there are, I, I'm getting this question more and more and more and more about, what can I do if inflation does start to go to you know ten percent numbers like that double digit inflation? You know what what can investors do to you know to stave that off because you know the cost of living is going to rise, wages are unlikely to keep pace with that. So you've got to look to really your investments and how you manage your investments and portfolio to try and you know knock that on the head because if you're not beating inflation, then you're losing money. It's as simple as that. Um, so it pays to be an asset owner if you're not a you know big asset owner like you know house prices continue to rise but houses are you know notoriously illiquid uh, and don't exactly provide you with great cash flow unless you're a landlord owner but then uh, there are issues around the cost of being a landlord as well so you know it opens up a big can of worms but it's important to you know make sure your portfolio is balanced and you know uh, although I'm a big advocate for active investing when you look at you know, like you say, the MSCI, what was it, 20-something percent 21. last year? I mean, that smacks inflation on the head pretty quickly. Um, so it's important for investors to know that a balanced portfolio with the right kind of mechanisms in it to, you know, expose yourself to growth opportunities with a bit of risk, um, to have some of those defensive style assets that can, you know, knock something like inflation on the head and keep your portfolio ticking over whether it be sort of more passive ETFs, indexes, things like that, are all things that are important to consider, along with some, uh, you know, some dividend paying stocks. We're also, uh, you know, always been a long, always been a big fan of a dividend paying stock and, and dividend reinvestment over time. Um, I think it was instilled in me from, from a 10 year old. Um, but anyway, as I say, lots going on. This year is going to be, frankly, I think it's just going to be bonkers as pretty much the last two years have been. Yeah. Um, so it's it's exciting, right? Because we, you know, who really knows what's around the corner? Um, with the good comes to bad, and with the bad comes to good. And if you're prepared and ready to open your mind to some of the opportunities in store, could be a really, really fun year uh, in both the traditional markets and the crypto markets, which I'm sure we'll dive into more over the course of 2021. But uh, yeah, we've banged on long enough today. Um, I've probably spoken way too much. And um, any closing remarks? Anything you'd like to? 
forecast or, or look into your crystal ball for 2022 kit to to predict for our, our viewers and, and listeners no i think after suggesting that peloton might be good good thing for a santa rally in our, our christmas podcast <laughs> last year i would be staying well clear of predictions uh this this time round. uh but no just to sort of follow on what you were saying it, it is very hard with inflation as you say if you're losing to inflation you're losing money um but obviously inflation is such a threat to so many of the markets especially at today's valuation um that it can be really hard you might want to sort of it would be very understandable to think you want to stay away from risky assets i think in the way that you're saying and and look to be defensive but the sort of dual risk of losing money if inflation pushes higher and markets get rattled is balanced by the risk of not making money if inflation is 10% and cash is earning you 0. Point, a very exciting 0. 0.25 after the rate rise in the uk um so balancing those two risks i guess of not making money, not making enough money to beat inflation and not being so over-invested that you risk losing money is going to be one, I think, the biggest challenge for, challenges for this year and the years going forward is to remember that there are two sides to that risk. You're not safe if you're in cash and you're not safe if you're in investments and you do have to be quite thoughtful uh, about how you plan to go around it and, and you know, alternative assets like in this case, gold, various parts of cryptocurrency, uh, or other strategies that are available uh, to retail investors, um, which are sort of maybe counter cyclical or, or uh, helpful to, against inflation in that way, are, are definitely worth looking into. And I know that we will be in EXI and in, in various of the services at South Bank, you know, there are people dedicated to just trying to help people through this exact problem. So, yeah, it's an important one and a, a big theme for 2022 for sure. Indeed, and if just as a as a warning, if you're like me and and your alternative asset mindset turns to something like you know wines, don't be like me and just drink them anyway. Um, make sure that you stick to your uh, investment strategy. That's why I never buy wine as a fine wine as a, as an alternative investment uh, strategy or whiskeys or anything like that. Just got a bad habit of drinking them instead. Anyway, thanks again for joining us this week, Kit. Thank you everyone for listening and watching. Those of you that are watching us and those of you that are listening to us, um, we'll be back with you again next Friday with another Exponential Investor podcast and obviously many many more throughout 2022. Look forward to a great year. Thanks for joining us, and we will speak to you soon. Bye for now.